Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. I'm Bethany Rue, Associate Publisher here at Pittsburgh Current, and welcome to Current Conversations with our special guest today, Humane Animal Rescue. Before we get to them, a couple general announcements. Our new issue hit the streets today. Yay, your drivers are actively putting it out right now. It is our fairs and festival issue. Uh, today is a beautiful day to get to a festival. It just so happens there's one downtown right now through a resorts festival. We have a booth, stop down, grab a copy, say hello. You could register your email to win a chance for two tickets to the Mattress Factory's Urban Garden Party. We also just launched our birthday party. It is our best year ever, yay! Which is funny, because it's our only year ever. Uh, we're actually an official venue for Deutschtown Music Fest, Friday, July 12th, 7.30 p.m. at Hip at the Flashlight Factory. It is free to attend. There's gonna be music, food, special guests, booze, all kinds of great stuff. There's a small registration fee. You can go to our website, under Interact, click on the event button, it'll take you right to there. So. With that all out of the way, I'm really excited for today's podcast, which is, by the way, brought to you by Just Pay Half, which is a fantastic service where you can go and find deals on basically everything in the world you would ever want. Restaurants, services, fun activities for the family, all kinds of things. So make sure you're visiting JustPayHalfPittsburgh.com to check that out. And now I'm thrilled to introduce our very special guest today, Manager of Communications for the Humane Animal Rescue League, Pat Petriopelli. What? No, yes. How Petra, I... Matt Petropoli. Petropoli. I'm so t- anybody that's watched me at all knows I'm terrible with names, but wonderful with people. And welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. So tell us a little bit about for those that might not know, what is a humane animal rescue and what do they do? Humane Animal Rescue is the result of the merger between the Animal Rescue League of Western Pennsylvania and the Western Pennsylvania Humane Society. See, those two names put together wouldn't really sound very good, so we merged together, create a new name, Humane Animal Rescue. We operate two domestic animal shelters on either side of the city of Pittsburgh. We also have a wildlife rehabilitation center out in Verona. We are the second largest animal welfare center in the uh, state of Pennsylvania. The only one bigger than us is um, over in Philadelphia. Apart from that, we're also the largest in the sort of tri-state region, if you leave them out. Okay, and what kind of uh, animals do you do you rescue? What, 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 what's the bulk of, and then you know, kind of what, what do you guys do? Uh, what I like to tell people mm-hmm. is that if it is a animal that is legal to own as a pet in the state of Pennsylvania, we more than likely have one right now, or we've seen them in the past couple weeks. Even the ones that aren't legal. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we get hedgehogs from, uh, from time to time. Um, that's one good example of a out there kind of animal we get, apart from your typical like dogs and cats, right. chinchillas, ferrets, and uh, uh, alligators too. <laughs> so you know about it's funny you brought that up. We are located in Beachview, um, and as people might or might not have heard, we recently had a five-foot alligator captured in Beachview. Now, Beachview, we've seen some strange things here. We love our little funky neighborhood, but never have we seen a five-foot alligator. Uh, We've come to find out that alligator's name is Chomp, and I believe that alligator, once rescued, went to Humane Animal Rescue. So what, what, what is the story of Chomp? That is, that's correct, and I also can say I have never seen a five-foot alligator outside of a zoo, maybe. But um, it's been a re- weird couple of weeks at Humane Animal Rescue. The past two weeks alone, we've received three stray alligators into our care, the third of which being the one right down the street here, the biggest one that we got. And Go Beachview. We got the biggest alligator. That's right. <laughs> yep. So uh, those the, all three of those gators, uh, they were packed up in our uh, wildlife center director's car uh, yesterday, and this morning they began their journey down to a, uh, a small rescue outside of Harrisburg, where they're going to spend a little bit of time there before going to Cape May Zoo in New Jersey. And then after spending some time there for a few months, they're going to go down to Croc Encounters in Florida, and that's where they're going to stay. Okay. Uh, now, as far as the specifics of why they have to stay in each place so long, there must be some like advanced gator science or yeah, something like science. that. Yeah, how does one prepare these gators for a road trip? Like, what do they pack in? Like, I don't like. What, what is do, uh, do they have to wear little gator seat belts? Like, how how is this facilitated from a technical point of view? Uh, air, airline crates. Uh, oh, they're okay. our most useful tool in transporting animals anywhere, um, especially something as potentially dangerous as an alligator. Uh, I know the one of the three we got in was 
I was told uh, they were very friendly. I was not willing to test that out for myself. <laughs> not really cuddly. You don't have an alligator snuggle room at no. Maine Animal Rescue. <laughs> you should consider putting that in if you're going to be getting alligators on the regular. Apparently, it's a new trend. Yeah. So, And I also noticed, too, just on your website when I, when I was um, doing some research for our talk today, you, you can no longer take raccoons. Has there just been like a dearth of baby raccoons? I know locally I saw some people just on my neighborhood Facebook page like had to rescue two baby raccoons, and they ended up there. Is, is that just something that's really common this type of year, or... It, is it just a weird, like, run of baby raccoons all of a sudden? Yeah, it's it's a combination of a few different things. Um, on one hand, our Wildlife Rehabilitation Center is getting a lot more animals this time of year than we did last year. And that, that's following a trend that we've been seeing over the past few years. We're caring for roughly 200 more animals than we were this time last year oh, wow. at the Wildlife Center. And I don't know if you've ever um, been up that way but it's one of our oldest facilities um talking like 150 years old it's like on an old like melon farm or something like that so uh you've got old buildings with like the old drawstring like open up the windows up top and things <laughs> like that um i believe they call that character uh, yes I mean, that's <laughs> what i like to think of it as uh so they're fairly limited up there but they're also one of our hardest working um facilities and they do the i i want to say they do the most out of any of us because of the um uh at-risk animals they work with um so it's a combination of that them just being um getting more animals than we got last year this time as well as um you have all this uh stuff going on in the state right now with the rabies scares uh happening mm -hmm. um outside the city and things like that and uh, raccoons are a notorious uh, rabies vector species mm -hmm. so beyond us so on one hand we are absolutely bursting at the seams with baby mm -hmm. raccoons i've seen the rooms it's very cute but also kind of stinky <laughs> And um, <laughs> baby raccoons are notorious for bad hygiene. So, yeah. and on the other hand, too, we also uh, we also just have to keep in mind what's going on with the animals out in out there in the world right mm -hmm. now, too. And uh, just we just want to keep the animals we have safe. Mm -hmm. And all, and what that means is uh, pretty much like knowing when to say like, hey, hold on a minute, let's refer you to a different facility, yeah. something like that. We actually have um, an operator on the phone down there. Uh, during open hours all the time now who can help direct people to the different rehab centers that can take a raccoon if they do find them. So you're still a resource. So if somebody watching or listening did have something that they were curious, like, where should I take this, this baby, whatever, fell into my backyard, I just found a seven-foot alligator, they could call Humane Animal Rescue, and you could at least, even if you can't take the animal in, maybe help them find somewhere they can. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what we want to do more than anything is be able to help people make the right calls when it comes to finding injured or at-risk wildlife outside. Um, we are very good at recognizing our own limitations and knowing uh, when we have to draw the line somewhere with uh, taking in new animals in our facilities, but we there's no limit to the um, knowledge and information we can provide people about taking care of things in other ways. Okay. Now, say somebody was in. Say somebody wanted to adopt a pet. Talk about the process. What they would. What they would go through. How Humane Animal Rescue helps facilitate that adoption process for interested for parents, potential for parents. So we've been doing a lot of work in making our adoption process more streamlined and easier than ever. Uh, all it takes is uh, heading into either of our shelter locations on, on either side of the city of Pittsburgh, down on Hamilton Avenue, and the one over on Western Avenue on the north side. And uh, if you go in there, you can um, sign in with our adoptions desk and go check out the animals. It's as simple as going and finding, uh, say, a dog you want to meet. Mm -hmm. Hop over to the adoptions desk, say, hey, I want to meet Spike. They'll go hook you up in a room with Spike, and you can sit down and hang out. Um, you can fill out any, uh, an adoption application. It's more or less optional now. It's just something to give our adoption staff something to talk to you about, see if there's any uh, potential trouble areas that might pop up in the adoption process, and we'll help walk you through it. And uh, it pretty much goes from there. Everything else you'd expect uh, between like paying the adoption fee, getting your dog license if it's a dog, and stuff like that. Now, uh, if we're talking about cats, 
uh, it's a little different. We have adoption events that we throw across the city, and we can actually adopt out cats at these off-site events. So if you see us down at, say, I don't know, the Gallery of Mount Lebanon, we will go down to a yeah, lot. Yeah, see you guys there. Uh, we'll be adopting out kittens there frequently, and uh, I will be out at a lot of those, and I pick a lot of the cats to bring out, and I really don't like bringing them back to the shelter, so... So come adopt these come kitties. Adopt them, yeah. <laughs> now, do, do you have any words of advice for somebody that might be wondering, you know, am I ready? Am I ready to make this adoption leap? I mean, what what are some questions people should ask themselves before they, because it is, it's a, it's a huge commitment. It's a lifetime commitment. You don't want to see these poor animals back again. You want them to find lovely forever homes. What are some things that people can maybe ask themselves before they, before they make that big commitment? I think that's a great uh, question. I, I think that one of the most important things you can do uh in terms of like um, animal welfare or like having a pet is knowing when you can't don't need another pet in your life or like knowing when to say no is a good way to say it because yeah that's what happens uh, in my line of work a lot is um, sometimes they end up back at the shelter and that's the last thing we want mm -hmm. so what you have to take into consideration a lot is if you have any pets at home already and will they like a new furry friend in the house mm -hmm. And that's going to depend on what kind of animal you have, what their temperament is, things like that. Uh, you also want to ask about how much space you have. I just had, I just got my third cat, and um, I don't live in the biggest apartment, and I'm seeing some territorial disputes mm. work themselves out right now. Uh, so you know, things like that can happen too, and I, I believe it will. Uh, everything will like you know settle down over time, mm. but. Uh, I could totally see a less experienced pet owner getting a cat and saying like, oh, the new cat's chasing my old cat around the house at night. I have to take them back when um, there's a list of steps you could take to sort of try to help the situation before getting to that point. Right. That being said, too, uh, we um, we put a lot of effort at the shelter in keeping in touch with adopters and trying to make sure we can tackle any of those issues that might come up to make sure that pet stays in a home. Okay. Well, I think that's a wonderful advice. And, and if people are anything like me, too, I know for myself, I have to just avoid going because I will come home with all of the animals and then that's not a good situation. I actually, I, ha I adopted a bulldog and he's very, it's not so much that he's territorial, it's just that he thinks he actually owns my home. So yeah, um, so make sure you guys are thinking really smartly about whether or not you're ready to adopt an animal. When you are ready to adopt, or if you have any questions, Humane Animal, Humane animal Rescue is a fabulous, fabulous resource for you. Uh, and one of the reasons we had Matt come on today was you got something brewing, some big some big online auction going on. Do you wanna talk to us a little bit about that and what that's for and how that's gonna benefit you guys? Absolutely. Yeah, we've uh, teamed up with Just Pay Half to uh, throw this big auction that's going to be uh, benefiting the animals at Humane Animal Rescue. We're going to have a ton of great items up for auction online. And, uh, yeah, you can go on there and bid for stuff starting uh, the on the, uh, is it the 17th, I believe? Yeah, I have the run dates here are the 7th, sorry to put on my glasses, 17th through the 23rd, and just behalf is a fantastic partner on this. Um, it looks like there's going to be some items on auction are going to be a shopping spree gift certificate for downtown stores. Who doesn't love a shopping spree? 360 degree lighted outdoor umbrellas. What? I'm going to just put a picture of that in the description box. That sounds like this is a fabulous time of year to get some of that. If you want to, if you might enjoy like a late night cocktail out on the patio, I think that's a great way that you can still see your cocktail. Um, display kitchen with all appliances, hot water heaters, furniture, getaways, uh, it sounds like there's going to be a very comprehensive list of items. The website for this, which again starts June 20 or June 17th through the 23rd, is bidpal.net backslash har. So starting the 17th, you can go, you can bid on these items, on these wonderful items. I'm assuming by then they'll probably have even more amazing items cooked up for you that you could bid on. You could put your bids on them. Um, and if you win, you're going to be really happy because not only did you win, but you helped out an amazing organization. Because I'm assuming you're you're that you are dependent on on donors and and funding and things like that, right, to do the great things that you do. Absolutely, yeah. We are a uh, totally uh, privately funded nonprofit. Um, the only little bit of money we don't get that's in our budget that's uh, from 
not from private donations is a smidgen from the city of Pittsburgh for our contract with them uh, regarding our animal control. That's how those gators showed up with us. <laughs> they just showed up. Yeah. Hello. Little, little <laughs> known secret. We, uh, I think we lose a little bit of money on each animal we get through them. So I don't even want to count that in our how that well, all pans out. So I mean, we are, yeah, we rely completely on donations from the public. And uh, stuff like this is so important in keeping our facilities running. Well, and it seems like Just Pay Half has been a great partner with you guys. It looks like they've helped save you over $254,000 since you started working with them with some of your costs. So not only are they helping you make money for Humane Animal Rescue League, it looks like they're helping you save some money too on your costs, which is great because the only thing better than making money is saving money. But now that I say that out loud, making money might be slightly better. But it sounds like that they've been a great partner organization for you guys from the beginning of your relationship. And it looks like that's going to continue now with this auction. Yeah, yeah, they, it's been a huge help. And uh, our um, our shelters have experienced such tremendous growth over the past couple of years. And uh, the key to seeing th our facilities and our services continue to develop and grow are um, fundraising events like this one and uh, and the amazing support we get from our donors every day. Um, it looks like, too, there's more ways even than just this auction that Just Pay Half can help. It looks like um, from my notes here that Just Pay Half offers customers a way to give back to Humane Animal Rescue League all year long. Um, anytime you make a purchase on JustPayHalfPittsburgh.com and you email a copy of your receipt to customer service at JustPayHalfPittsburgh.com. And don't worry if you're not writing this down. I'll put everything in the description when we post this. Uh, Just Pay Half will actually donate an additional 20% to Humane Animal Rescue. So shop the option. Shop, I'm sorry, shop the auction. I'm getting so excited to go shop. I can't even talk right now. And then anytime you shop during the day, if for whatever reason you miss the auction, you can still find ways to help out Humane Animal Rescue League. So it sounds like it's a wonderful partnership with a wonderful organization. Yeah. Um, so I know, too, that you have some other events coming up. So there's the online auction, which you could do from the comfort of your own home and your underpants. But there are some other things that you've going on, right? Some summer events that you might want to tell our readers and listeners about. Right. Uh, real quick, I wanted to mention, I, in case you uh, didn't say it, um, but you can go on to, uh, on to BidPal right now and see the majority of the things that are going to be up, uh, the items that are going to be up for auction during the actual dates. So if you want to, you know, plan out your shopping spree, you can also <laughs> hop on there and get a heads up, make a little list so you can get in there first, get that first bid and uh, maybe win a good bit of stuff. And yeah, like you said, um, we've got a lot of things going on all summer. Um, like I said, we have a lot of adoption events we do around the city. Uh, then we also have some of our big sort of tent pole fundraisers we do every year. Uh, these are the things that um, they're a lot of fun for us. They're a lot of fun for you. And they're ultimately a lot of fun for the animals because all the money goes to benefit them in the end. Uh, the one big one that I always like to bring up is uh, we have our Jam on Walnut concert series down on Walnut Street and Shadyside happening every month this summer. So we have uh, all sorts of we have themed nights this year. We haven't done this before, but we have a disco night coming up this uh, at the end of this month. Are the animals going to be wearing little silver off-the-shoulder tops? <laughs> well, here's the trick with that. So what we do at Jam on Walnut is we close off two blocks of Walnut Street and Shady Side on either side of Belafonte. We erect a stage there at the intersection, and we set up about five or six beer tents on the street. And it just turns into a massive street party from uh, like 7 o'clock till midnight. And uh, it's a really great time. Uh, we don't have any animals there, but a lot of people will bring their pets down with them. And it's always really interesting because you'll see somebody jamming out, holding their like yellow lab or something like their that. Five foot alligator. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No one's brought an alligator yet, but I wouldn't be surprised at this point. This is this will be the year if there's ever been a year. Yeah. So that's uh, we have a uh, yeah. I think it's a disco night uh, at the end of this month, um, as well as a uh, we have a beach bash next month. And then it kind of goes through, I think we have a 90s themed thing, you know, in August. And uh, we're doing those every month through October. So if um, that sounds like a lot of fun, then uh, you can hop onto our Facebook. We've got the full listing of all the bands and all the dates up on there. All right. Awesome. I, I'll be at 90s for sure. And I will be dressed for theme. Um, so thank you again, Matt. And if 
if you're out there listening and reading and, and, and you kind of like what you heard and you like how Just Pay Half Pittsburgh is helping you mean Animal Rescue League, they could help you in your organization too. And Dana would love to talk to you. So you can email Dana at JustPayHalfPittsburgh.com to find out how they can help your organization not just raise money, but save money the same way they've helped Humane Animal Rescue. Look for that online auction starting June 17th. Matt, thank you again so much for being here, guys. Adopt, Don't Shop, Humane Animal Rescue League is a fantastic organization. Pick up today's copy of the Pittsburgh Current. And uh, as always, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for joining us this morning, guys.